the first time I met the Beatles was to my former boyfriend, Klaus Foreman, who uh, saw them one night when he was wandering, wandering around Hamburg. And um, then he heard this beautiful sound of rock and roll music and he went down into a quite dark, filthy cellar where these boys were standing on a very, very tiny stage and performed in such a way that he was absolutely, let's call it, knocked out by the music and by their looks and everything around it. So he told me about it and um, it took him a couple of days to convince me to go with him to see the boys because the Reaper Barn is not a place where young ladies in the 50s or 60s were to have seen or, or go there. You know, it was not a nice place to go. But um, one night I just said, all right, I come with you. And um, so we went there and... Um, when I went down the stairs and looked at the stage, I was just amazed how beautiful these boys looked. And being a photographer then, it was a photographer's dream. In fact, it was my dream because I always thought to, uh, I would like to take pictures of, of young boys who looked like them. So, and then when I heard the music, it was even more fantastic for me. So, ever that first night, uh, I went nearly every night to see them. And that's how it started. <laughs> had these uh, I don't know what you call the uh, the hairstyle you know like the the rockers did in in the 50s like Marlon Brando on with uh, with a lot of grease so and they wore really mad clothes sort of uh, not very clean but unusual like John had a leather jacket on and Stuart had a a real proper suit jacket on they they were so individual every one of them tried to be stylish in their own little way because they didn't have any money at all so they made the best of out what they had so John had a pair of jeans on which he rolled up which was very trendy then and um, Stuart had a very, very pointed shoes. And um, so I've never seen anything like it before. So that was uh, always my dream to take pictures of people with character and a charisma. And there they were, all five of them looked absolutely wonderful. at one of the photos from the session that you just described they're they're seated on like a, a, a metal frame of i don't know if it's a building or a, a car and it's labeled yugo haas hanover what are they sitting on and then maybe you could describe this pose well it is a lorry where the uh, the people from the fairground transport their equ equipment with and um of course, there are a lot of big iron things where they do their carousels and uh, things. So that is where they are sitting on. Mm -hmm. Now you have a you have it's such a nice pose. I mean, there is um, because it's like a um, an iron frame. There's like four separate parts of the frame, and each of the beetles is posed within one part of it. Several of you know two of them are standing, three of them are sitting on the frame. Um, Paul's holding his, Paul, everybody, everybody is actually holding their instrument. Yeah. And Pete Best is standing in front of his drum kit. And um, it's a really cool looking shot. Yeah. How did they feel about you posing them? Because this looks posed. It looks like you said, you sit here, you sit there. Yes, well, you know, as I said, told you before, my English wasn't very well, good then. So I just went over and grabbed their heads and put them in the direction I wanted them to look. 
and uh, I, I told them to sit up there and hold the instrument. And so it was a real sort of, um, it was a composition, you know, of people. And what about the haircut? Uh, that just, uh, it's so long ago, we can hardly remember, you know. It was something to do with Paris and something to do with Hamburg, and we're not quite sure now, because there's so much been written about it, even we've forgotten, that's true. We just... Have you read it up to find out? Yeah, well, you know, they, they just make it up about the hair now, but it, it was something sort of happened between Hamburg and Paris. Now, you described when you first met the Beatles that their hair was greased back. Yeah. How did you change their hair? Well, uh, my boyfriend Klaus had a big problem and because his ears used to stick out. But uh, in any other way, he was the most beautiful boy the world has seen. So I thought, how can you get this to go, these big sticking out ears? And then I had the idea to just grow the hair over them, which he then did, and it looked absolutely beautiful. So when the boys saw Klaus, Stuart was the first one who, who said, oh, I would like to have that hairstyle. And because their hair was very long, I could do it in one night, which I did. And Stuart was the first one who performed on stage with the so-called Beatles or Klaus haircut. <laughs> yeah, I never heard it before. Referred to as the Klaus haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did the other Beatles decide to pick up on the same style? When they finished playing in Hamburg, I, they went back to Liverpool and I visited Stuart there. And then George came up to me and said, uh, could you please cut my hair like Stuart's? So I did that. But the other two didn't want to know about it, John and Paul. And Pete couldn't have the hairstyle anyway because he had curly hair so George came George had beautiful hair and it went absolutely great when I cut it for him and he was all pleased but a, a little bit later John and Paul went to visit a, an old friend of ours another German photographer called Jürgen Vollmer he used to live in Paris and was assistant to William Klein a very famous photographer and Paul and John visited uh, Jürgen and he persuaded them to have their hairstyle changed. And so they came back from Paris looking like the rest of the Beatles. You became engaged to Stu Sutcliffe, who at the time when you met him in 1960 was the bass player in the band. You seemed so taken by all of the Beatles. What special happened between you and Stu Sutcliffe. Well, it's very strange, and maybe it sounds sort of sentimental, but uh, when I saw him for the first time, I knew that was my man. You know, he was st and still is the love of my life, even though he's gone for such a long time. But I never ever, and I was married a couple of times, met another man who was so fascinating, so beautiful, and so soft and well-mannered, you name it, and that he was. And so such a gifted artist. It seems to me you both lived in a very visual world. I mean, he was an artist to a world. I mean, he was an artist who learned to play bass so he could be in the Beatles. And you, of course, you know, were a photographer, a very visual person. So even the, though you didn't speak each other's languages at first, he's English or German, it seems like you must have had this visual connection. Yes, there, there was a sort of bound between us because maybe I correct you there. Stuart just played in the band because John persuaded him to, to be in the band. And the first painting Stuart sold, John persuaded him again to buy a base for that, to be in his group. So actually all Stuart wanted was to become a good painter. Why did and John want him in the band? Why, why did John because, want him in the band so much, knowing that he didn't know how to play? Well, because uh, John always said when Paul was moaning about, you know, how Stuart didn't practice and all that, but John always said, it doesn't matter, he looks good. He is rock and roll. Stuart was a very special person, and uh, he was miles ahead of everybody, you know, as far as intelligent and uh, artistic feelings are concerned. He was miles ahead. So... Uh, I learned a lot from him.